Hi, and welcome to the uh, presentation on programmable parser design in Verilog. The purpose of this tutorial is to show how to design high-speed parsers and more importantly how to design them in such a way that you can meet the timing requirements of high-speed designs today. And so let's dive into the uh, the presentation next so what is the key problem in designing of the program parser so when you design wide data width parsers you have to take care of the fact that the field that you're trying to extract in a parser can be anywhere in the 256 bit word or a 512 bit word or a 1024 bit word. This is a pretty challenging task in itself. On top of it, the starting point of that field that you're trying to extract from this protocol is moving as well. So when somebody gives you a new protocol, the protocol could be right after ether type in the ether, ether, you know, the MAC protocol, or it could be um, after IP layer, it could be after UDP layer, it could be a layer five protocol, it could be a tunneling protocol. There could be many variations of new emerging protocols. It could be right before the MAC as well. The difficulty is to understand where the starting point is, and then from there, if a variable length field is to be extracted then there is many possibilities because the field could be one byte long two byte long three byte long and all the way to any number of lengths how do you do this task at high speeds is this even possible to do or programmable parsers are just you know a dream you can't really ever get there so i try to demystify this in this presentation there's two major problems the next header and the field extraction next header problem means that given a protocol let's say some new protocol that you came up with where does this protocol end and what is the next header so so you'd get queued into where this protocol started from the previous protocol once you know where this protocol starts you have to now figure out the next header right and the next header would be at some variable offset because obviously as you guessed it this is a programmable parser you don't have a fixed offset this this protocol that you're trying to design is not of a known length so you obviously have to program a variable offset which is a variable header length for this protocol and the start offset is also variable because you don't want to assume a specific location of the previous protocol because this is a totally programmable parser. So that's the first problem, the next header problem. And then the next problem is that you may have one or more field extractors, which is given a protocol, like if it's IP protocol and somebody wants to extract IP addresses like source IP, dest IP, TTL or ID fields, etc. You have to do some field extraction on the protocol. And the field extraction also is starting at a variable offset, right? Because the previous protocol is, you can't assume anything about where the previous protocol ended. So you, you can't assume anything. And then the start offset of this field that you're trying to extract is variable. And on top of it, the length of the field is also variable. It's fairly complex. I guess you begin to grapple at the fact that this is getting extremely difficult and you worry if you'll ever be able to meet these requirements so i think this is kind of the realization that i came to that this is almost impossible to design a parser like this so that's where i think the um, pipelining if you think about it the pipelining because there is nothing in this design that is a feedback it's always uh, it's a difficult problem but it's it's forward going and so as long as it's forward going we can pipeline it and so one of the major ideas that you can use 
in terms of pipelining this is that let's say this was the start of this protocol and then you're trying to do a field extractor or you're trying to figure out where the next header is that is just every single next byte is a possibility based on the lengths the offs the variable offsets every byte is a possibility so and the start could be anywhere in this in this uh, 256 bit or 512 bit word it's staggering how many possibilities there are so the optimization you can do is that you can instead of taking all these possibilities in a single clock cycle what you can do here is that you can say in the first clock cycle I'm just gonna figure out if it fits here if it lies in this space or it lies in this space or it lies in this space I'm gonna break the problem in three once I figured this out I'm gonna explore exactly the location of where my field extractors field extractor starts or the next header indicator starts by exploring them in these different states. So the overall complexity of decoding all these possibilities has now been broken up into three states and I could have chosen to break it into even more states therefore simplifying the timing closure problem. And this idea could be applied to both field extractors and next header indicators because you can always pipeline them. If there are many many possibilities here just try to break the problem down, divide and conquer. So you don't have to solve the whole problem. You can say either I'm going to look in this space or this space or this space and break them into different states and take a look at it there. So, and that way you can pipeline it better and divide the bigger problem into smaller problems. The other assumptions I make is that the these field extractors, instead of being variable length you could assume they're fixed length so instead of assuming they're anywhere from one byte to hundreds of bytes long I can assume they're always four bytes and if I need less than four bytes I could always mask them later on and if I need more than four bytes I could use two field extractors so making such assumptions can simplify the design significantly so make use of fixed length field extractors and then the third thing you have to obviously keep track is not only, you know, there's pipelining that gets even more cumbersome because sometimes these words line up exactly within a clock cycle or sometimes they straddle multiple clock cycles. And by assuming fixed length fields also helps us in handling these conditions. And I will show you the code and you can see that designing to these three optimizations makes this design completely feasible. So with that let's dive into the code and take a look at it. So here I am in the code and you can see I've set it up where you know I don't want to go into every little block but here's the clock cycle block but I want to really show you the state machine logic. In the state machine you can see that the idle state this this part is for the um, I should say the um, the header part which is this part the next header extraction so uh, for the next header what I do is I try to figure out and in my case the tag shows me where the previous header or the this protocol that I'm trying to design its starting point is so this tag shows me where that lies and based on the header length I can then compute where the next header will lie. It's fairly simple. And the problem is that in case that next header lies many clock cycles later, like if this clock, if this protocol was very lengthy, then the, the next um, header valid would lie many clock cycles later. So obviously you have to compute if it lies within this clock or any other clock. And if it lies in any other clock, then you have to create that state as well and you have to go hunt that down. So I create a search state and therefore I can deal with that. So that's the next header. Now let's look at the more complicated part, which is the field extraction. And the field extraction is where it gets interesting. So in the case of field extraction, you have to say that where the field starts compared to the where the current protocol is, um, the beginning of the current protocol, this field 
So you, if this field is within this clock cycle, then you, then you extract it. But if it doesn't, then you go again search for it. But like I showed you earlier, instead of trying to resolve, because there's, there could be 32 different locations where the protocol could, the field could start. So instead of doing that extraction, what you do is that you just say, if the field lies in this space or this space or this space or this space. And if you go back to the diagram, you can see that I here I show three, but in my uh, state machine, uh, you can see there's like five different states in which you can go. So there's many states. I break this down into either you lie in this space or this space or this space and so on. And then once you figure that out, that's all the work you do in this state. And then you go jump to the next state. And there you can set up a case statement that says, if you are aligned with a certain byte, then you do the extraction based on that. And then you can see the last stage. You can see that in case that you are aligned to the bottom and you're straddling, then you need one more state. You need to obviously extract whatever falls in this state and then go in the remain the remainder can be extracted and appended to the data in the next state. And because this is a fixed length protocol, all this is working out pretty nicely for me. So that's pretty much it. Um, that kind of seals this. So just going over it one more time and summarizing the key to programmable parsers is that you must understand that there are variable offsets and variable header lengths involved both for field extractors and next header. And to simplify it, think in terms of better pipelining. You can always do feed forward pipeline pipeline as much as you want so that you can improve the efficiency and timing of the design and assume that the fields are fixed length and you can always mask the bytes that are not needed and finally you have to break the whole complex problem of trying to extract from a single clock cycle in many different byte positions to identifying a range of byte positions in one clock and then going in a different clock cycle and breaking it across states to do a search only in a limited space. So, so um, those are the main ideas. And if you apply these ideas, and obviously my code's available, you can look at the code. And in looking at the code and this diagram here, I think you will understand and appreciate the fact that pipelining this way makes the design extremely simple and could run at very high speeds. So guys, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, give me, give me a thumbs up and uh, uh, please do subscribe and hit the bell button in case you get notifications when I upload new videos. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.